Edward the Confessor was among the last Anglo-Saxon kings of England, and usually considered the last king of the House of Wessex, ruling from 1042 to 1066. The son of Ethelred the Unreadier and Emma of Normandy, Edward succeeded Cnut the Great Son, and his half-brother, Harthacnut, restoring the rule of the House of Wessex after the period of Danish rule since Cnut conquered England in 1016. When Edward died in 1066, he was succeeded by Harold Godwinson who was defeated and killed in the same year by the Normans under William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings. Edgar the Etheling, who was of the House of Wessex, was proclaimed king after the Battle of Hastings in 1066, but never ruled and was deposed after about eight weeks. As discussed below, historians disagree about Edward's fairly long reign. His nickname reflects the traditional image of him as unworldly and pious. Confessor reflects his reputation as a saint who did not suffer martyrdom, as opposed to King Edward the Martyr. Some portray this king's reign as leading to the disintegration of royal power in England and the advance in power of the House of Godwin, because of the infighting after his airless death. Biographers Frank Barlow and Peter Rex instead portray Edward as a successful king, who was energetic, resourceful and sometimes ruthless arguing that the Norman conquest shortly after his death tarnished his image. However, Richard Mortimer argues that the return of the Godwins from exile in 1052 meant the effective end of his exercise of power, citing Edward's reduced activity as implying a withdrawal from affairs. About a century later, in 1161, Pope Alexander III canonized the late king, Saint Edward was one of England's national saints until King Edward III adopted Saint George as the national patron saint c. 1350. His feast day is the 13th of October, celebrated by both the Church of England and the Roman Catholic Church in England and Wales. Early years in exile. Edward was the seventh son of Ethelred the Unready, and the first by his second wife, Emma of Normandy. Edward was born between 1003 and 1005 in Islip, Oxfordshire, and is first recorded as a witness to two charters in 1005. He had one full brother, Alfred, and a sister, Godgifu. In charters he was always listed behind his older half-brothers, showing that he ranked behind them. During his childhood England was the target of Viking raids and invasions under Swain Forkbeard and his son, Cnut. Following Swain's seizure of the throne in 1013, Emma fled to Normandy, followed by Edward and Alfred, and then by Ethelred. Swain died in February 1014, and leading Englishmen invited Ethelred back on condition that he promised to rule more justly than before. Ethelred agreed, sending Edward back with his ambassadors. According to Scandinavian tradition, Edward fought alongside Edmund. As Edward was at most 13 years old at the time, the story is disputed. Edmund died in November 1016, and Cnut became undisputed king. Edward then again went into exile with his brother and sister. His mother had no taste for the sidelines, and in 1017 she married Cnut. In the same year Cnut had Edward's last surviving elder half-brother, Edwig, executed, leaving Edward as the leading Anglo-Saxon claimant to the throne. Edward spent a quarter of a century in exile, probably mainly in Normandy, although there is no evidence of his location until the early 1030s. He probably received support from his sister God Gifu, who married Drogo of Mantis, Count of Exon in about 1024. In the early 1030s Edward witnessed four charters in Normandy, signing two of them as King of England. According to the Norman chronicler, William of Jumiges, Robert I, Duke of Normandy attempted an invasion of England to place Edward on the throne in about 1034, but it was blown off course to Jersey. He also received support for his claim to the throne from a number of continental abbots, particularly Robert, abbot of the Norman Abbey of Jumiges, who was later to become Edward's Archbishop of Canterbury. Edward was said to have developed an intense personal piety during this period. 
but modern historians regard this as a product of the later medieval campaign for his canonization. In Frank Barlow's view, in his lifestyle would seem to have been that of a typical member of the rustic nobility. He appeared to have a slim prospect of acceding to the English throne during this period, and his ambitious mother was more interested in supporting Harthic Knut, her son by CNUT. CNUT died in 1035, and Harthic Knut succeeded him as King of Denmark. It is unclear whether he was intended to have England as well, but he was too much occupied in defending his position in Denmark to come to England to make good any claim. It was therefore decided that his elder half-brother, Harold Harefoot, should act as regent, while Emma held Wessex on Harthic Knut's behalf. In 1036 Edward and his brother Alfred separately came to England. Emma later claimed that they came in response to a letter inviting them to visit her that was forged by Harold. But historians believe that she probably did invite them in an effort to counter Harold's growing popularity. Alfred was captured by Godwin, Earl of Wessex who turned him over to Harold Harefoot. He had Alfred blinded by forcing red-hot hokers into his eyes to make him unsuitable for kingship, and Alfred died soon after as a result of his wounds. The murder is thought to be the source of much of Edward's later hatred for the Earl and one of the primary reasons for Godwin's banishment in autumn, 1051. Edward is said to have fought a successful skirmish near Southampton, and then retreated back to Normandy. He thus showed his prudence, but he had some reputation as a soldier in Normandy and Scandinavia. In 1037 Harold was accepted as king, and the following year he expelled Emma, who retreated to Bruges. She then summoned Edward and demanded his help for Harthacnut, but he refused as he had no resources to launch an invasion, and disclaimed any interest for himself in the throne. Harthacnut, his position in Denmark now secure, did plan an invasion, but Harold died in 1040 and Harthacnut was able to cross son opposed with his mother to take the English throne. In 1041, Harthacnut invited Edward back to England, probably as heir because he knew he had not long to live. The 12th century quadripartitis, in an account regarded as convincing by historian John Maddicott, states that he was recalled by the intervention of Bishop I. Elfwine of Winchester and Earl Godwin. Edward met the Thens of all England at Hurst Chever, probably Hurst Head, a shingle spit opposite the Isle of Wight which was the site of the later Hurst Castle. There he was received as king in return for his oath that he would continue the laws of CNUT. According to the Anglo-Saxon chronicle Edward was sworn in as king alongside Harthacnut, but a diploma issued by Harthacnut in 1042 describes him as the king's brother. Early reign Following Harthacnut's death on 8 June 1042, Godwin, the most powerful of the English earls, supported Edward, who succeeded to the throne. The Anglo-Saxon chronicle describes the popularity he enjoyed at his accession before he, Harthacnut, was buried. Edward complained that his mother had done less for him than he wanted before he became king, and also afterwards. In November 1043 he rode to Winchester with his three leading earls, Leofric of Mercia, Godwin and Seward of Northumbria, to deprive her of her property, possibly because she was holding on to treasure which belonged to the king. Her advisor, Stigand, was deprived of his bishopric of Elmham in East Anglia. However, both were soon restored to favour. Emma died in 1052. Edward's position when he came to the throne was weak. Effective rule required keeping on terms with the three leading earls, but loyalty to the ancient House of Wessex had been eroded by the period of Danish rule, and only Leofric was descended from a family which had served Ethelred. Seward was probably Danish, and although Godwin was English, he was one of CNUT's new men, married to CNUT's former sister-in-law. However, in his early years Edward restored the traditional strong monarchy, showing himself, in Frank Barlow's view, a vigorous and ambitious man. A true son of the impetuous Ethelred and the formidable Emma, in 1043 Godwin's eldest son Swain was appointed to an earldom in the southwest. 
Midlands, and on 23 January 1045 Edward married Godwin's daughter Edith. Soon afterwards, her brother Harold and her Danish cousin Bjorn Estrithson were also given earldoms in southern England. Godwin and his family now ruled subordinately all of southern England. However, in 1047 Swain was banished for abducting the abbess of Leominster. In 1049 he returned to try to regain his earldom, but this was said to have been opposed by Harold and Bjorn, probably because they had been given Swain's land in his absence. Swain murdered his cousin Bjorn and went again into exile, and Edward's nephew, Ralph was given Bjorn's earldom. But the following year Swain's father was able to secure his reinstatement. The wealth of Edward's lands exceeded that of the greatest earls, but they were scattered among the southern earldoms. He had no personal power base, and he does not seem to have attempted to build one. In 1050-51 he even paid off the 14 foreign ships which constituted his standing navy and abolished the tax raised to pay for it. However, in ecclesiastical and foreign affairs he was able to follow his own policy. King Magnus of Norway aspired to the English throne, and in 1045 and 1046, fearing an invasion, Edward took command of the fleet at Sandwich. Bjorn's elder brother, Swain of Denmark, submitted himself to Edward as a son, hoping for his help in his battle with Magnus for control of Denmark. But in 1047 Edward rejected Godwin's demand that he send aid to Swain, and it was only Magnus's death in October that saved England from attack and allowed Swain to take the Danish throne. Modern historians reject the traditional view that Edward mainly employed Norman favourites, but he did have foreigners in his household, including a few Normans, who became unpopular. Chief among them was Robert, abbot of the Norman Abbey of Dumages, who had known Edward from the 1030s and came to England with him in 1041, becoming Bishop of London in 1043. According to the Vita Edwardi, he became always the most powerful confidential advisor to the king. The crisis of 1051 to 1052, in ecclesiastical appointments, Edward and his advisers showed a bias against candidates with local connections, and when the clergy and monks of Canterbury elected a relative of Godwin as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1051, Edward rejected him and appointed Robert of Jumages, who claimed that Godwin was in a legal possession of some archiepiscopal estates. In September Edward was visited by his brother-in-law, Godgifu's second husband, Eustace, Count of Boulogne. His men caused an affray in Dover, and Edward ordered Godwin as Earl of Kent to punish the town's burgesses, but he took their side and refused. Edward seized the chance to bring his overmighty Earl to heel. Archbishop Robert accused Godwin of plotting to kill the king, just as he had killed his brother Alfred in 1036. While Leo Frick and Seward supported the king and called up their vassals, Swain and Harold called up their own vassals, but neither side wanted a fight, and Godwin and Swain appear to have each given a son as hostage, who were sent to Normandy. The Godwins' opposition disintegrated as their men were not willing to fight the king, when Stigand, who was acting as intermediary, conveyed the king's jest that Godwin could have his peace if he could restore Alfred and his companions alive and well. Godwin and his sons fled, going to Flanders and Ireland. Edward repudiated Edith and sent her to a nunnery, perhaps because she was childless, and Archbishop Robert urged her divorce. Swain went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem, but Godwin and his other sons returned with an army following a year later, and received considerable support, while Leo Frick and Seward failed to support the king. Both sides were concerned that a civil war would leave the country open to foreign invasion. The king was furious, but he was forced to give way and restore Godwin and Harold to their earldoms. While Robert of Jumages and other Frenchmen fled, fearing Godwin's vengeance, Edith was restored as queen, and Stigand, who had again acted as an intermediary between the two sides in the crisis, was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury in Robert's place.
Stigand retained his existing bishopric of Winchester, and his pluralism was to be a continuing source of dispute with the Pope. Edward's nephew, Earl Ralph, who had been one of his chief supporters in the crisis of 1051-52, may have received Swain's march earldom of Hereford at this time. Later reign, until the mid-1050s Edward was able to structure his earldoms so as to prevent the Godwins becoming dominant. Godwin himself died in 1053 and although Harold succeeded to his earldom of Wessex, none of his other brothers were earls at this date. His house was then weaker than it had been since Edward's succession, but a succession of deaths in 1055-57 completely changed the picture. In 1055 Seawood died but his son was considered too young to command Northumbria, and Harold's brother, Tostig was appointed. In 1057 Leofric and Ralph died, and Leofric's son Eilfgar succeeded as Earl of Mercia, while Harold's brother Gyth succeeded Eilfgar as Earl of East Anglia. The fourth surviving Godwin brother, Lewine, was given an earldom in the southeast carved out of Harold's territory and Harold received Ralph's territory in compensation. Thus by 1057 the Godwin brothers controlled all of England, subordinately apart from Mercia. It is not known whether Edward approved of this transformation or whether he had to accept it, but from this time he seems to have begun to withdraw from active politics, devoting himself to hunting, which he pursued each day after attending church. In the 1050s, Edward pursued an aggressive, and generally successful, policy in dealing with Scotland and Wales. Malcolm Canmore was an exile at Edward's court after Macbeth killed his father, Duncan I, and seized the Scottish throne. In 1054 Edward sent Seward to invade Scotland. He defeated Macbeth, and Malcolm, who had accompanied the expedition, gained control of southern Scotland. By 1058 Malcolm had killed Macbeth in battle and taken the Scottish throne. In 1059 he visited Edward, but in 1061 he started raiding Northumbria with the aim of adding it to his territory. In 1053 Edward ordered the assassination of the South Welsh Prince Rhys ap Ruthurk in reprisal for a raid on England, and Rhys's head was delivered to him. In 1055 Griffith ap Llewellyn established himself as the ruler of all Wales, and allied himself with Eilfgar of Mercia, who had been outlawed for treason. They defeated Earl Ralph at Hereford, and Harold had to collect forces from nearly all of England to drive the invaders back into Wales. Peace was concluded with the reinstatement of I. Elfgar, who was able to succeed as Earl of Mercia on his father's death in 1057. Griffith swore an oath to be a faithful under King of Edward. I. Elfgar appears to have died in 1062 and his young son Edwin was allowed to succeed as Earl of Mercia, but Harold then launched a surprise attack on Griffith. He escaped, but when Harold and Tostig attacked again the following year, he retreated and was killed by Welsh enemies. Edward and Harold were then able to impose vassalage on some Welsh princes. In October 1065 Harold's brother, Tostig, the Earl of Northumbria, was hunting with the king when his thens in Northumbria rebelled against his rule, which they claimed was oppressive, and killed some 200 of his followers. They nominated Morca, the brother of Edwin of Mercia, as Earl, and invited the brothers to join them in marching south. They met Harold at Northampton, and Tostig accused Harold before the king of conspiring with the rebels. Tostig seems to have been a favourite with the king and queen, who demanded that the revolt be suppressed, but neither Harold nor anyone else would fight to support Tostig. Edward was forced to submit to his banishment, and the humiliation may have caused a series of strokes which led to his death. He was too weak to attend the dedication of his new church at Westminster, which was then still incomplete, on 28 December. Edward probably entrusted the kingdom to Harold and Edith shortly before he died on 5 January 1066. On 6 January he was buried in Westminster Abbey, and Harold was crowned on the same day. The succession Starting as early as William of Malmesbury in the early 12th century, historians have puzzled over Edward's intentions for the succession. 
One school of thought supports the Norman case that Edward always intended William the Conqueror to be his heir, accepting the medieval claim that Edward had already decided to be celibate before he married. But most historians believe that he hoped to have an heir by Edith at least until his quarrel with Godwin in 1051. William may have visited Edward during Godwin's exile, and he is thought to have promised William the succession at this time. But historians disagree how seriously he meant the promise, and whether he later changed his mind. Edmund Ironside's son, Edward Ethling, had the best claim to be considered Edward's heir. He had been taken as a young child to Hungary, and in 1054 Bishop Eildred of Worcester visited the Holy Roman Emperor, Henry III, to secure his return, probably with a view to becoming Edward's heir. The exile returned to England in 1057 with his family, but died almost immediately. His son Edgar, who was then about five years old, was brought up at the English court. He was given the designation Ethling, meaning throneworthy, which may mean that Edward considered making him his heir, and he was briefly declared king after Harold's death in 1066. However, Edgar was absent from witness lists of Edward's diplomas, and there is no evidence in the Doomsday Book that he was a substantial landowner, which suggests that he was marginalized at the end of Edward's reign. After the mid-1050s, Edward seems to have withdrawn from affairs as he became increasingly dependent on the Godwins, and may have become reconciled to the idea that one of them would succeed him. The Normans claimed that Edward sent Harold to Normandy in about 1064 to confirm the promise of the succession to William. The strongest evidence comes from a Norman apologist, William of Poitiers. According to his account, shortly before the Battle of Hastings, Harold sent William an envoy who admitted that Edward had promised the throne to William but argued that this was overridden by his deathbed promise to Harold. In reply, William did not dispute the deathbed promise but argued that Edward's prior promise to him took precedence.